Hello and welcome to another video and since the sale is going on right now I've had plenty of requests on recommendations of oh, which hero should I get I like this play style what hero fits that and instead of answering each one of those separately I'm going to make a series of videos I tried doing it all at once and it ended up being an unwieldy beast at like an hour and a half long so no one really wants to see that we're gonna do it in weight classes. We're going to start today with the lights and then the next video is going to be mediums, heavies, and assaults. I'm going to go through every single hero that is on sale currently and give my opinion on them. Now there are some in here that I simply have not played yet and haven't gotten that much experience but I'll give my best opinion on what they can be used for and you may find that a certain mech you do better with or you do worse with but again, it's just my opinion. But let's get into the mechs and go through them one by one. Starting off the lights, we have the Adder. Now, for Omni Mech heroes, I value them a little bit higher because you can switch out the hard points because they're Omni Mechs. You can switch them around. If you have an existing Adder that you really like playing, you can do it on the hero and gain additional C bills, which is very nice to have. So if you enjoy the adder, you will most likely want to pick up the hero as you get your favorite adder builds with increased C builds. But what does this adder add to its chassis? Well, the interesting part is it's got side torso ballistics. It's not enough ballistics that you can really um, do much with that. Maybe a pair of UAC 5s in the side torsos, but you are... Uh, gonna blind yourself because the uh, the UX are right beside your cockpit and the muzzle flash is pretty uh, annoying but if you like adders this is a good chance to pick up the adder cinder and enjoy your adders with more money uh, the commando the the death snail this is a hit and run skirmishing type mech it is only 25 tons and it's tiny for its weight you only have four energy hard points to in each arm, and you would think, ah, you know, that's not enough firepower. It really does work. You got like four medium lasers on there. You put a huge engine on it. The uh, 113 kph that it has listed here is grossly lower than what it can do. It can get the 150, I believe, even 160 kph. This is all about drive-by shooting, hit-and-run type tactics. You just move straight in, going at top velocity, swing by your opponents, laser them a few times, and then get the hell out. Also, it has massive increases to armor across the mech with base structure plus 10 in the CT. We've got armor in the arms and legs. This thing is hard to leg, it's hard to disarm, it's durable as heck, and it's small. If you want a hit and run mech, the Death Snell is a good choice. Next up is the Firestarter hero, the Ember, and it used to be the king of the battlefield a while ago, before clans were introduced and such. It had uh, sort of medium lasers and machine guns. It still does this very similar design now, yet with uh, Civil War upgrades of ER mediums and light machine guns. That's the kind of thing I like to run on it. It got a little bit larger in the rescale, where it's a little bit easier to pick off, say, a specific side torso than before. But when you're playing this mech and you have machine guns on it, you have to play it like a scavenger. You look for mechs that are weakened and you prey on them, you pounce, you machine gun them to death, maybe small pulses or something for the energy weapons, and then you just get out as soon as things get hairy. You don't have as much durability as some of the other uh, uh, light mechs. You've got some structure bonuses, but structure is not as good as armor because armor can't be crit. And you just have to play it like that. This mech used to be right on the very top of the light meta. It has fallen a bit since then, but it is still workable in the current system. The Javelin Hi there. I love that name. It is a Javelin. We've got two missile, one in each side torso, and four energy, two in each arm. You can do things like energy weapons in CERM 4s or 6s to make sort of a striker type design. You could even, if you wanted to, sort of drop the arms, put all that into, say, a pair of MRMs. Maybe that would work. I haven't really tested that before. Also, something I have done on this hero is put a couple huge rocket launchers in the side torsos and then just 
medium lasers basically work off the medium lasers for most of the game and if you get the opportunity just core someone out with a massive rocket volley it's okay it probably isn't the absolute best but it's a pretty decent little striker type hero if we're looking for a really good striker hero we have the Jenner Oxide. While this mech is a little bit larger due to the rescale, it packs a serious punch with four Serm 4s, two in the center torso, one in each arm. Also, this mech comes with some decent durability upgrades with legs of plus 16, so it's hard to leg, and a center torso of plus 11. It's really good at just swinging in behind an opponent in the midst of a striker-type brawl pumping in SRMs into their tailpipe, and then disappearing. That's what this thing can do. Uh, unlike uh, the other Jenners, this mech does not have any jump jets, which means its mobility is limited to ground-based pathways, so you have to plan out a little bit ahead of time. It would have been a little bit better if it had maybe just a single jump jet, allow it to take some uh, more aggressive flanking routes, but for now, you'll have to just stick to the ground, but still, this is a very good striker mech. We have the Kit Fox Purifier, and what the Purifier adds to the Kit Fox is these two side torsos, each with two energy for a total of four. This has been a problem for the Kit Fox since its inception. It's just a lack of hard points that aren't in the arms. And if you take, say, the ECM or something along those lines in those arms, you lose a lot of your hard points, and you're just going, ah, this kind of sucks. But with these side torsos, you get this four energy. They're all above the cockpit. It works really well. You can get like seven energy and an ECM on this thing. It really improves the ability for the Kit Fox to perform on the battlefield. But again, it is a Kit Fox. It is slow, it is relatively immobile. It's a little squishy as it doesn't have any uh, real durability increases in the center torso or the side torsos. It has some in the arms and legs, making it less likely to be legged, less likely to damage itself when it falls from jump height. But you want to play this as a slower mech staying with your heavies and assaults protect them from other strikers instead of trying to be the striker yourself next up we have the locust and i hate locusts and this is one that i really hate because it's not only hard to shoot it's also hard to see because you do not have the ability to lock on because it has ecm so this is really good mech. You put on, say, four ER mediums and an ECM, run around, do that, just sort of poke, disappear, rebase, flank again, shoot again from another location. Wonderful. You can also drop down those lasers, maybe a bit of the engine, get a little bit uh, more tonnage out of it. Say, take a couple machine guns in that center torso. That is quite nice to do. And otherwise, it's just a really good harasser. If you want to be a pain in the ass to me, you want to pick up a Locust. Next up is the Panther, and it's a decent Panther. It's actually got some good durability quirks with plus 12 basically across the entire mech, including uh, plus 15 in the arms. So quite nice in terms of that. 40% increased PPC velocity, so your PPCs are wickedly fast. And that's actually a really good design for this. You take those two PPCs, it actually comes with its stock. You take one, throw it to the other arm as you have two energy in each arm. You have that one missile in the center torso, but it's crit starved as you have to put your engine in there as well. You can't put anything larger than two slots. You take that one, say, off the left arm, you put it onto the right arm, you strip down the left to get some more heat sinks, maybe a little, slightly larger engine as this thing only has a XL140 and you do a pop tartar skirmishing uh, type mech with a pair of PPCs that are moving wickedly fast. Very easy to land at range, making this a good fire support mech. The Raven Hugen with a pair of missiles, one in each side torso, and four machine gun ports, I'll say machine guns, and four ballistics, two in each arm. This mech is wanting to just clean up damaged foes. The four machine guns are amazing at ripping apart internal structure, and the SRMs have some great crit damage potential as well. Uh, you don't really want to be using those machine guns against armor, as you can't crit through it, 
So you just want to wait on the battlefield, sort of skirmish a little with your SRMs if you get some good shots in, and then once the enemy is open, open up with everything and just pour right into them. This is also a good flanker as it does have some jump jets so it can maneuver around the battlefield a bit better. And for durability, it's got some nice increases for structure and missile range plus 20%. It's got some extra bonus sensor range if you want to utilize that, although that doesn't really matter that much in the average match. And missile cooldown of 15% to keep, say, a pair of SRM-4s chugging on the battlefield. But next up is the Spider Anasi. And this is an interesting spider. I feel like it maybe lacks a little bit of hard points it could have used. Maybe if it gave it one more ballistic in each arm that would be amazing, but unfortunately we have just one ballistic in each arm for total two, one energy in each arm for total two, and one center torso missile, which is crit starved because it's in the center torso. Now important thing to note about machine guns is that they are hit scans. So if you are pointing at an opponent and pulling the trigger on machine guns, you're doing damage to them. Even if it looks like your bullets are falling behind them, you're actually still hitting them because that the the animation of the machine gun bullet is not relevant. It's aiming at them, which is relevant. So I believe that's how it is. I will stand by that statement. So having what I do on this mech is a pair of ER smalls and a pair of light machine guns. I just put them in the same weapon group and I just fire them together. Then I have a SRM-6 in the center torso, a good engine, some high amounts of jump jets, going for that mobility, and just use the SRMs, possibly the lasers on a separate click, and then when I need to, just lay into constantly shooting with the machine guns and ER smalls, just circling around our opponent, trying to just rip them to shreds, and then as soon as they catch on and start shooting you, just get out of there. You're a spider, you can jump like crazy. Uh, for durability, we have a plus 10 increase across the entire mech with some missile cooldown to go for that single missile hardpoint. A little bit of energy range, a little bit of energy cooldown. It's an okay sort of harasser, skirmisher type design if you want to go for that. Now, the urban mech, it's an urban mech. Everybody needs to buy an urban mech. So therefore, you buy this mech. <laughs> But really, it's got flashy lights on it, it has a siren, it makes beep beep noises, so it is better than all other mechs in the game, objectively. Beyond that, it has three energy in the left arm, two in the center torso, and a single ballistic in the right arm. Uh, just based on that, you can do things like, say, mass medium pulse, and that's a fairly good design. You can do sort of a standard laser vom with ER mediums and a large pulse, or you can do stuff like, say five ER smalls and an AC-10, something along those lines. I haven't figured out exactly what builds fit on this, but you can do something like that. Uh, it's a good mech. The standard 60 engine, if you want to be the meme-tastic, goes 32.4, so I'd advise putting an XL engine on this thing, maybe like a 175 or so. But the real important part of this mech, the massive increase in durability, Plus 20 armor in the CT, right torso is plus 14, arms and legs plus uh, 10 and 14 respectively. What the hell? This mech can take a lot of punishment. Max out your durability tree, you will be surviving longer than a heavy in this thing. If you play your cards right and you torso twisting, which on another note, this thing can torso twist 360 degrees. So you can be running away at full speed and still be shooting backwards perfectly fine, which is amazing. And then last of the lights, we have the Wolfhound, the Grinner. Now this is basically a Wolfhound 2 that has, as far as I remember, lost an energy hard point to gain an ECM. So while you're losing some maximum potential alpha strike, you are gaining some covertness with that ECM, able to sneak around the battlefield, protect yourself from enemy missiles, and sort of maybe shield your team a little bit. If you like the Wolfhound 2, you will probably like this mech. It is very similar in terms of the amount of durability increases it has. So this mech, while being fairly large, is extremely hard to kill. It's good. I enjoy it. I have picked one up on the free-to-play along with the, uh, the K9 and uh, we'll be using it uh, a lot. But that is it for now for the light review. Up next will be the mediums. Thanks for watching and good hunting.